Day 6. There may be more picturesque places to stay in Wales, but I doubt it. After a night in the delightful oyster mouth suite, one felt ready for anything. So today we are going to Corgi, who make e Torts socks and uh, some of our knitwear. And then we're going to Fox Brothers, who are very famous, um, they're down in Somerset, famous for West of England flannel, that raised um, woolen spun cloth. The filmmaking department were on parade, but Mr. Floyd was still dressing. We are, of course, now waiting for stills. Really? Yeah. Where I've loaded it? all I can load. Mm. Hey, look, he's got his new smedley on. That's very nice. It's a nice colour. It matches my socks, look. Oh, yes, I see. That's very nice, isn't it? Also, yeah. I think you'll find this is a Sunspell Superfine Cotton T-shirt I'm wearing. That's oh, hello. Nice. Is that um, an Ettinger wallet? It is. Ettinger of England. Handmade since 1934. <laughs> From the waist down, I'm the same old knackered goat. <laughs> Yeah, you forget how um, lovely Britain is when you spend your time cycling between the East End and the West End. <laughs> it's just heartwarming to be out here. It's not actually warming though. It's bloody cold. They're actually quite annoyed because they'd been told that Robert Redford was coming. <laughs> and what they got was a bloke from Savile Row in a flannel coat. <laughs> Do you want a polo? Corgi's Mr. Knitwear had suggested we park beside his executive transport. There's the Mazda. They've all got Mazdas. Mazda, Mazda, Mazda. The cars were the highest technology on show. Inside was a glorious assemblage of vintage machines operated by a bevy of Welsh maidens and the occasional son of Glendower, intent on producing the very best socks known to man. At Torts, we're obsessed with corgi woolies, socks and scarves in planes and patterns. Even the most sober customer quivers at the sight of their stripes and goes weak at the ankles. Chris is justly proud of his product. Every time they pull the carriage across two yeah. or three rows, they have to go across yeah. doing the cabling. Yeah. You would be able to push a pen through the hole because it is actually twisted by hand, yeah. so it's a proper cable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is why the scarves that we did in the first season were so expensive. So expensive, yeah. They're made on like these machines and they're cabled, and cabled, yeah. cabled by hand. Yeah. The sock gets put onto, onto a board, into the machine, spin the wheel and that just clamps them together with two yeah. heated plates. Yeah. So it's a, it's a steam heated press. Yeah. Yeah. I've been told with these presses, you know, the modern presses just don't give the sock such a good press. Yeah. So, if it works, why change it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the spirit. If it was a, a cheap sock, it would just be run through a machine, you'd end up with a big ridge across your toes, very uncomfortable. But our socks have a completely flat seam. They're hand-linked. Then if you look on the finished sock after it's pressed, you, know, you just can't feel the seam, it's yeah. completely flat. Yeah. What happens is most of the, the staff take a, bo a bundle of socks home at night yeah. and they sit there in front of the telly and they do it and it's just a little bit of extra wages for everybody. <laughs> These are machines you just have to look at to understand. There isn't a cog or gear these folk don't know and hardly a circuit board or electro widget anywhere to go mysteriously awry at exactly the wrong moment. Mr. Corgi Sr. is supposed to be retired, but if it rains, he comes to the factory to make socks. Luckily, it rains virtually every day. So what age were you when you started in the family, in the family business? Well, when I actually came back from college. Yeah. Well, I was, uh, 20, 21. Yeah. So you've been here for... 65 years. 65 years. I'm Helen and I've been here for four years. 
and I'm in charge of the transfers and the packing of the socks for dispatch. We've got the Royal Warrant with Prince Charles, which I think also helps to sell the product. I suppose we take pride in what we do, really. You know, everybody watches the quality, because that's what sells, isn't it? It's the quality that we try and do and keep up, which is what the customers like. This whole street used to be factories, but at the moment, there's only coggies left, really. Long may they reign. That was great. Yeah. That's, um, that's the first time I've been to that factory. We've been working with Corgi for, well, three seasons now, so. And what a nice factory. Lovely factory. But we're now heading back east before heading south and west again. We have to cross the Severn, the mouth of the mighty Severn. Uh, we have minus 59 minutes to get there, so, so even, by, even by our own tardy standards, we're establishing new records here for lateness. This, for me, is this fabulous cashmere duffel coat. Half a dozen pairs of what Corgi does so well. Socks. Here it is, the mill, Fox Brothers and Co. Three minutes after it closes. No gentleman's wardrobe is complete without a flannel suit or flannel breeks. The cognoscenti on Savile Row know foxes and will ask for it by name. Our coat and trouser makers have been caught wistfully caressing hems and lapels for the joy of experiencing its smoothness. Hello. 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 Oh, hello, Douglas. How okay. are you? How are you? Yeah, very well. Did you, you know we were coming today? Sort of vaguely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Corgi, Fox Brothers use machinery apparently made out of recycled submarines and dirigibles. the finest, or I believe, the finest cloth in the world. So it's just, it's lovely to work for, a, for something that you can see a beautiful product at the end. We make many different cloths, ranging from very lightweight suitings to big heavy overcoatings, but we're most famous for our luxury flannels, which are made into luxury suits for business people. It's nice to own uh, a fox suit. It's something that you, you invest in a lovely luxury product. It means then you're proud to wear it and know that you've got the best. Beside the factory, the archive. We had the provenance that we were here till 1772. We've recently found the annual accounts for 1753. And recently we found a pigskin bound book which shows we're here from 1620 as Thomas Ware and Co. So they would have been producing yeah, cloth for the Civil War. Fox Brothers made their name by producing putties. So yeah, the biggest war contract was given for, for putties, which was 80, 82,000 miles putty, which is incredible. Fox Brothers, £200,000 note. And uh, I like the fact that you've gone to the trouble of stamping cancelled on it. Yeah. There's always going to be demand for the very best, which Fox flannels are. What we're actually making here, the cloth, um, the flannel, and, and the fact that it's made 
in England that's actually made in-house and the actual quality uh, and still using real traditional skills. That's what we're, we're really trying to preserve and that's what we're known for is the real, real quality and, and, and the workmanship that goes into running a, uh, a small artisan mill like this. We are now looking locally for our uh, raw materials with uh, the use of Exmoor Horn which is our local sheep breed. So we're actually going back and actually becoming nearer to the business that we were that when existed, we, we yeah. Yeah, existed. As darkness fell, we went in search of a humble bed and breakfast, but luckily there weren't any. Thornbury Castle is owned by the wonderfully eccentric Andrew Davis. We drew lots for the most Spartan room of all, and the stills department won. I feel like I should be wearing a crown of thorns. Oh. Here's to Andrew Davis, very nice chap, and Thornbury Castle. Yes, and it's a beautiful fireplace. Mm. And it's complimentary sherry. Mm. Cheers. I could come on holiday and sit in front of this fire and drink sherry. Patrick, I think this calls for some video. If Ben is in the bathtub, I'm going to call security. <laughs>